Well, good Thursday morning, everyone. Trust everyone is having a good day thus far. Uh, we're going to continue on with our devotions based on uh, the sermon uh, from Sunday. And kind of we've been asked to do a uh, share devotion of what, what kind of challenged us, what, uh, what spoke to us. Um, and we've been in Matthew 27 as the other guys have done this week, and we're going to continue on there um, today. But uh, on Sunday, if you wasn't able to be there, um, the part that talked to me the most, uh, that spoke to me, was uh, when Pastor TJ was talking about choices. And, and he talked about uh, emotional, casual, irrational, and uh, then fatal choices. And the one that I'm going to talk about tonight uh, or today, rather, is fatal choices. Um, so we are going to go to um, Matthew and 27 and begin reading in verse 24, New 24 and 25. It says, When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a torment was made, he took water, washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Verse 25, then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and our children. Um, and, and as we look at that, we we see here that Pilate, of course, had been back and forth. Um, you know, they've been trying to, the people, um, trying to find a way, find a reason to crucify Jesus. And um, from the, the mob that went with Judas, uh, you know, all the way through. Uh, no one could ever really pinpoint uh, Jesus as being guilty of anything, um, that he was innocent, you know. And, and so Pilate, you know, Pilate had armed guards at his disposal uh, that would protect him. Um, but yet he, he crumbled under the pressure here. Um, and, you know, he washed his hands thinking that he would be innocent, um, but yet turned an innocent man over to the people to be crucified and released uh, Barabbas, who was a uh, known criminal, okay? Uh, and, and so when we look at that, you know, two, two choices. P, uh, Pilate, the choice that he made um, was, was obviously devastating. Uh, but then we see here in verse 25, and that really spoke to me, and the people said, his blood be on us and our children. And, and so when we look at choices, that is a fatal choice. Um, you know, for, for what they said, but, but I look at it today, we, we all make fatal choices, uh, in how we live our life, the decisions we make, uh, you know, one of the biggest, um, uh, humanistic, um, lies that is told is, you know, it, it's, it's my body. I can do what I want. Uh, it's my life. I can live it how I want. And, and that is false. Um, cause every one of us is connected in somehow, some way. Uh, me as a father, my decisions affect my kids. Um, even though they're 22 and 18, my decisions affect my kids. Uh, they have since God uh, bless me and, and Bobby with them. Uh, every decision we make um, affects more than just me and her. It affects them. Uh, my decisions as a husband affects my wife. Um, even that at my age, my decisions that I make will affect um, my family, my, my parents. I'm, I've been out of the house now for 30 years um, and married. But still yet, some of the decisions I make will affect my family. So uh, we have to be cautious of that. Uh, humanistic would say it's me. I'm number one. I'm looking out for just me. But the Bible says that our decisions we make uh, will have lasting effect on people. And so we're going to look at this right here. Um, Jesus, you know, what, what can you do with him? Um, you know, and, and that's kind of the same thing that Pilate and him was trying to decide here. You know, what do you want me to do with this man? Well, the same question still rings to us today. What, what are you going to do with Jesus? Uh, number one, you can receive him as your Lord. Uh, the Bible says, but as many as received him, uh, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God even as those that call upon his name or believe upon his name. Um, he who has the son has life. You know, the Bible's full of verses that talking about 
um, that we can receive him as, as our Lord and our Savior. Or uh, you can reject him. You can reject his lordship over your life. Uh, you can you can go about this solo. Uh, you have that free will. Uh, the Bible says, he who hath not the son hath not life. Um, you know, you, you can reject his lordship. Uh, number three, you can believe in him as your Lord and Savior. Okay. Um, you know, again, multiple service um, scriptures on, on, you know, believing in him and believing in him and in him is life. You know, uh, as many as believe on his name, you know, um, for God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son that whosoever what believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You can choose not to believe in him as the son of God, the savior of the world who died for your sins. You can say it's a myth. It's a fable, um, you know, I, and not believe, it, you know, but the Bible says he that believeth not shall be damned. Uh, he that believeth not shall not see life, but the wrath of God will abide on him. Um, you can confess him as your Lord. Again, you know, many scriptures. Uh, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. Or you can deny him. Um, you know, Jesus said, if you deny him uh, before man, then he, he'll deny you before the Father. Um, but, but one thing that you can't do, and this is where we want to end right here, you can't ignore it. You cannot just wash your hands of an innocent man. Um, you know, Jesus said, he that is not for me is against me. And, and that's a decision that we all make. So when we choose not to make a decision, um, then, then technically we have made a choice. Uh, we've made a choice to, to deny him. All right. Um, and, and so I like that. You know, one thing that we cannot do, we cannot deny we cannot ignore Christ. We have to make a decision with him. All right. Um, and on the fatal choice, I want to share a picture here. This is a newborn calf that I had on Thursday. Um, and, and when we talk about a fatal choice, you can see mommy here cleaning her up. And uh, she's fine and healthy in this picture right here. But, uh, but sometime between Friday at 233 before I went to the football game. I went up and checked her uh, before I went back to school and calf was up and fine nursing its mom and um, was doing good. And then Saturday, me and the boys was working around on the farm and, and we went up and I noticed in this region right here, uh, there was a big, huge gap missing. Fur was gone, bleeding, skin was tore and something had gotten a hold of her. Um, I'm not trying to gross no one out. The calf is still alive and uh, we are treating her and she seems to be getting a little better each day. But I think sometime during the night that the mom made a fatal choice. Um, she may have thought she had the calf hid um, from any predator, coyotes are bad out here, from anything that might have come lurking in the night to get the calf. Uh, but the mom let the calf out of her sight, left it, um, and in the process, something came and got a hold of the calf. Um, I do believe that the mom came and ran it off beforehand, um, before it, it, it completely uh, destroyed the little calf here. But a fatal choice that that, that mom dropped her guard and, and walked away. Um, she, she seems to be a good mom and runs the dogs away uh, when I'm up with her. But at that night, that time, that decision, uh, she made a fatal decision. And as a result, this calf uh, is paying the price. Um, and, and I think the same is true with us, you know, as parents, when we drop our guard, um, you know, there's, there's a choice to, that's going to have to be, you know, there are decisions that we have to make. And then there's results for those decisions. Um, and, and so I think that no matter what, um, even if you're watching this today and you don't have kids, um, don't fall into the belief of it's your life. You can live it however you want. Um, and that's fine. You'll, you know, you'll, you'll pay the price yourself because, because your decisions, uh, will affect other people. Uh, my decisions affect other people. And, and so what we need to do, uh, and I'm thinking back, uh, 
a long time ago when the pastor was teaching on community. You know, we are all involved in a community in some form or fashion, whether you're in church, out of church, um, you know, you're you're not with your family. You're you know, you may have co-workers and that's it. But still, yet every decision you make um, will affect not just you, but other people as well. And, and so let's be mindful of that. Um, some choices are fatal. Some choices are not fatal. Um but as the other guys have talked about so far, you know, um, we need to be cautious. And, and the best way to do that is, is being in the word of God, praying about the decisions we make, not making irrational choices um, and, and not making fatal choices that, you know, are going to affect other people. And, and so I'm so thankful today that, that we have the right to choose um, and, and we have direct access. If you've not watched Brother Jody's uh, message that he shared with us last night at church about the veil being torn. Because of that, you have access to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so I'll leave you with this. What question? Uh, the last question here, what can you do with him? You can receive him. You can reject him. You can believe him or choose not to believe him. You can confess him as your Lord or you can, can, can deny him. But one thing you cannot do, you can't ignore him. Ignoring him would obviously be a fatal choice. Rejecting him would be a fatal choice. Choosing not to believe would be a fatal choice. Denying him would be a fatal choice. My prayer is that you choose him because in him is life and life more abundantly. We pray that you have a blessed day. Uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Hopefully you can tune in if you're not able to be with us at church. If you go to another church or something, else and unable to be with us on Sunday morning. Um, maybe you can tune in. We're doing skits and um, that's tying in with the message here during this Easter season and, and they've been really powerful. So pray that you have a great day. Uh, we love you and we'll see you soon.